In this video, we will talk about synapses. A synapse is a site where an action potential is transmitted from one cell to another. We have two different types of synapses, electrical synapse and chemical synapse. First, let's talk about electrical synapse. So in this type of synapse, there is a direct flow of current from cell to cell where the gap junctions. Cardiac and single unit smooth muscle cells have these electrical synapses and I'll explain it using an example of the cardiac muscle cells. So here I will zoom to cardiac cells. It is important to note that between the cardiac cells we have these special electrical windows which are called gap junctions that are always open. You already know that an action potential in a first cell starts with sodium influx via voltage gated sodium channels that depolarize the cell initiating an action potential. When a first cell depolarizes the sodium further flows forward from first cell to the second where gap junctions. The current flow depolarizes the second cell up to the threshold. As a consequence, the voltage gated sodium channels open up and we get a massive sodium influx that depolarizes the second cell, generating an action potential. The bottom line is, in electrical synapses, we have a direct cell-to-cell -cell communication via gap junctions. Therefore, in electrical synapses, there is no synaptic delay which is seen in chemical synapse. They are very fast. Another important point here is that because the gap junctions are always open, the electrical synapses are bidirectional. In other words, they work in both directions. What this means is, if current flows backward from a second cell to the first cell, it depolarizes the cell up to the threshold, and this opens voltage-gated sodium channels, and we generate an action potential. The second type of synapse is a chemical synapse, which is found in various regions of the central and peripheral nervous system and also in a place where the motor neurons communicate with the muscle cells at neuromuscular junction. It is very important to note that a chemical synapse neurons release a neurotransmitter which chemically stimulates the postsynaptic cell. Therefore, it takes time to release and diffuse the neurotransmitters. Due to this reason, chemical synapses do have synaptic delay. In addition, they work only in one direction. Let's talk about chemical synapses given in an example of the neuromuscular junction. First, let's see what is neuromuscular junction and study the main components that participate in neuromuscular transmission of nerve impulses. It is very important to know that alpha motor neurons communicate with skeletal muscle fibers at specialized synapses called neuromuscular junction. This gap between the presynaptic and postsynaptic membrane, which is a part of skeletal muscle, is called the synaptic cleft. Because in a chemical synapses, the information transmits via neurotransmitters, in a presynaptic terminal at a neuromuscular junction, we have many vesicles that contain a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. It is very important to know that in a postsynaptic membrane of the muscle fiber, there is a special muscle region that enfolds a number of times in order to increase its surface area. This is happening because in a neuromuscular junction, 
Here we have many receptor channels called nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Without these receptors, neuromuscular nerve transmission is not possible. This specialized region of the muscle fiber is called the motor end plate, and if you continue looking at both sides of the motor end plate, here we have both the sarcolemma and the T tubules. Please note these components of neuromuscular junction to clearly understand neuromuscular transmission. So let's see how action potentials transmit from a neuron to a muscle cell to initiate contraction. The action potentials or electrical signals travel down and depolarize the nerve terminal and entering the synaptic region, the action potential just disappears. The depolarization of the presynaptic membrane opens presynaptic voltage gated calcium channels, leading to calcium influx down its concentration gradient. The intracellular free calcium concentration increases, which activates special protein, syntaxin, in a surface of the vesicle and mobilizes the vesicle to move toward the presynaptic membrane. In addition, in a presynaptic membrane, we have another protein called synaptobrabin, which is also activated by calcium. So, syntaxin and synaptobrabin attach to each other. When both proteins are activated and meet together, the synaptic vesicles fuse with the plasma membrane and empty their acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft by a process called exocytosis. Next, acetylcholine diffuses across synaptic cleft to the postsynaptic membrane. In a postsynaptic membrane, we have a special channel receptor which has a binding site for the acetylcholine. This channel is an example of the ligand-negated channel, and in neuromuscular junction, this is called a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. A nicotinic receptor is a protein composed of five subunits, 2-alpha-1, beta-1, gamma, and delta subunits. Acetylcholine binds to the alpha subunits and causes a conformational change and opens these channels. It is very important to know that these channels are permeable to sodium as well as potassium. However, because the membrane potential in a motor end plate is negative 90 mV, which is very far from sodium equilibrium potential, we have a greater net force on sodium when compared potassium whose equilibrium potential is close to negative 90 mV. Therefore, sodium massively rushes in, whereas a tiny amount of potassium leaves the cell. Sodium influx locally depolarizes the motor end plate up to negative 50 mV, which is the threshold. This depolarization has a special name and is called an end plate potential. The end plate potential now is 40 mV. It is extremely important to know that the end plate potential is not an action potential but is simply a local depolarization of the motor end plate. Another important point to remember is that uh, sodium influx and potassium efflux do not stop at threshold. They continue moving in and out respectively until the motor end plate becomes 0 mV. You already know that in order to generate an action potential, we have to have voltage gated sodium channels which are very fast and in the motor end plate we do not have them. The closest region where we do have these channels is the outside of the synaptic region in sarcolemma on both sides of the motor end plate. It is very important to know when sodium fluxes in, 
and the end plate potential reaches the threshold of negative 50 millivolts, the sodium then spreads to the outside of the synaptic regions to adjacent muscle fibers whose sarcolemma is reach of voltage gated sodium channels. The local current depolarizes the resting membrane potential in a muscle cell up to the threshold potential. As a consequence, in these regions, the voltage gated sodium channels open up and we get a sodium influx that initiates an action potential. This action potential then spreads in the surface of the muscle fiber and T-tubules and causes the muscle to contract. 